All right, today's video, I want to talk about what it means to be a low dropout regulator. Um, and so first of all, we have to understand what, what does dropout mean, okay? And so here's an LM317 regulator. Um, we can look at what it's doing. It has an input and an output. And so let's say you want to regulate 12 volts. Well, you need something bigger than 12 volts in order to regulate it. Um, it'd be nice if you could put in 15 volts and get out 12 volts, or put in 12 volts and get out 12 volts. But this particular type of device it needs some voltage inside in order to operate. So there's like a, a NPN pass transistor or an PNP trans transistor, something in here that drops voltage, and you need some headroom, and that's called the dropout. Now, it's not always easy to find in uh, the data sheet, um, but here, it is on this one. It says V in minus V out, the input to output differential voltage. So this doesn't say drop out. It says input to output differential voltage, okay? It says that minimum is three volts guaranteed, maximum is 40 volts. So you can drop 40 volts on the regulator, but you need at least three volts of headroom for it to operate on all the other parameters that the data sheet has to offer, okay? So this particular part, I think, is an amp and a half. Yeah, amp and a half, and over certain voltage and everything. What Texas Instrument will guarantee is that this part will operate correctly under all conditions if you have at least a three volt um, input to output difference, and that's the dropout, the three, a three volt dropout. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at a. Let's see here if I printed it out. Yeah. Um, let's look at a. a part that is not adjustable. Uh, this is a 78 something, like a 7805 or 7812 or something like that, okay? And uh, it will have the same specification in it somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Um, okay, so this one is down here. Uh, they're calling it dropout voltage, okay? So the dropout voltage at one amp, so we're testing it at one amp, um, now this goes up to an amp and a half, so they're limiting their test conditions. Um, let's see if this one limited it, its test conditions. Uh, let's see, this particular part, oh, that's a different part. That's a different part. Uh, the part we just looked at is this one. And let's see what kind of test conditions it has. Recommending conditions, da 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 da, three volts. Okay, so um, whenever you look at here, this is the recommended operating conditions, not guaranteed, but recommended. And then you have to look at what is the normal conditions if not otherwise specified. And these are really hard things to read in data sheets, and they kind of lie a little bit sometimes in data sheets and stuff. But you can kind of peruse and see around in here and see if. Uh, if this was at one amp or at different amps, or is three volts good for good for the 1.5 amps? It, it's hard to say. I'd have to read the data sheet very, very carefully. Um, but anyway, over here they do tell you the test conditions, which is nice, right on the specification. So they say at one amp, the dropout voltage is two volts. So you need at least two volts above whatever you're regulating, okay? So the dropout here is, is two volts, okay? Two volts, all right. Um, so, uh, there is things called low dropout regulators, okay? So here is one, um, a low dropout, okay? Low dropout means that it's lower than those other things, right? <laughs> um, and so it looks just like an LM317, Okay, it operates the same way as an LM317. It's just a fancier part. Uh, this is an LMS1585 or 1587. I have the 1587, uh, so we'll be trying that. Um, and uh, it is a nice part. Uh, this particular part is a TO220 package. It's good for three amps. So it's twice as good as that uh, LM317, so that's nice. Um, it doesn't look like it's using a FET, it's just using a bipolar pass transistor. That's the pass transistor there, there's input to output. Um, 
It does have current limiting capability and thermal limits. It has a thermal limit protection. It has a over over current protection, so it'll shut down if it's if it's out of bounds, which is nice. I think the LM317 is the same way. And here we go. So VREF uh, is 1.25 volts. That's the same as a LM317. And here we go. Uh, dropout voltage. Okay. So the dropout voltage is uh, typically 1.15 volts and maximum is 1.3. So if you're designing a circuit and it has to work under all conditions, this one is guaranteed to 1.3, okay? And the other one was guaranteed to three volts. So that's a big difference, the difference between three volts and 1.3 volts, especially for power management and conserving energy. And uh, if you build a product in the United States where it's 120 volts and you ship it to Japan where it's 100 volts, um, you, get, you can get droop in various places. So yeah, it's nice to have uh, the capability of being able to run a real low dropout. All right. Or if it's battery powered, it'll, it'll, the battery can last a lot longer because it, it, it's going to last all the way down to 1.3 volts and, and then, and then, and then not work. All right. So, uh, so this is partly, uh, dropout regulators and chip of the day. Uh, and the chip of the day will be the, uh, LMS 1587. All right. So let's, uh, get my board out and we'll do some testing. All right, um, I have a setup here where I have an LM317, and uh, this is the input voltage and this is the output voltage. So we're inputting 15 volts and we're regulating it down to 12 volts. And I can adjust the little uh, wheel over here to anything we want. Let's set it for 10 volts and that'll make us do the math easier. Okay, so currently we have a five volt drop, right? We're inputting 15, but we're outputting 10. So we have a, a five volt, uh, drop between the two. Now, uh, low dropout means how low can this go before that is affected, okay? This has to be some headroom. And so I'm going to lower that 15 volts down, and we'll keep an eye on the 10 volts. And when we see the 10 volts do something, um, we will stop. All right, and so I'm continuing to go down. Oh, it just started to do something, okay? So I'm gonna go back until it just goes back up to 10 volts again. And there we go, is it changing? Nope, I'm gonna move it down ever so slightly, right about there, okay? So I claim that you need about 1.7 volts of headroom, um, or the dropout of this regulator is 1.7. Now that's only valid for the amount of current that we're drawing and the voltages that we're drawing. And so um, it's not going to be worst case, um, but in this particular instance, it's 1.7 volts of headroom, okay? So let me take out the 317 and I'm gonna put in the other low dropout part and we'll see if it really is low dropout, okay? I'm going to adjust the voltage back up. I'm going to set the 10 volts again. There, oops, there we go. Let's try to get this thing to settle at 10 volts. There we go. All right. So let me drop this one down until we start to see a change over here on the 10 volts. I'm going to go down. And right there, we're starting to see something. So we'll go back up. So we don't see any changes. Looks like it's stable there. Let me crank it down. Right about there, okay? So it's about 1.2 volts, okay? So the low dropout regulator is about half a volt, half a volt better in this particular case. Um, and like I said, this is probably an easy case, um, but we can see that the low dropout is doing, doing its job. That's the video on what, what it means to be low dropout, and we compared an LM317 to a uh, 1587 CT LEO.